Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I just wanted to do a very casual, non-scripted video all about gender roles and parenting. This is just gonna be some things that I've been thinking about and exploring, talking about with my partner, lots of ideas, personal thoughts, and just questions in general, lots of questions. So for context, I am in a cis-hetero relationship and whilst my work is very much absorbed in learning about experiences that are different to mine and learning about all sorts of different sexualities, genders and relationship structures in my personal life, my personal life is very cis, very hetero, very monogamous, very vanilla, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be talked about because here's the thing, cis hetero monogamous people tend to just be like, okay, great. Like I fit the normative boxes. I don't need to think about my gender. I don't need to think about my sexuality. I don't need to really question or think about like my relationship structure. And to that I say, no, let's interrogate everything. I think sometimes we can fall into the trap of just taking everything at face value, especially a lot of the messages that we receive around our gender and sexuality and our like role in society, instead of just being curious about it and kind of figuring out, hey, what actually do I want? What actually is going to work for us? Am I overthinking this? We shall see, but it is definitely something that I think a lot about. And this video is sponsored by Lello, who I'll talk about a bit later in the video. So first up, what Dan and I are doing. Ultimately, we're going to try and find whatever way parenting works for us in terms of our circumstances and also our strengths and our skills. However, Dan and I do tend to fall into quite gendered stereotypes a lot. Is this necessarily a bad thing if I'm aware of it? Hmm. But this is something that I'm always questioning. Like, am I doing this because I am defaulting to the woman's role in a cis hetero relationship? Or am I doing this thing because I genuinely like it? This is where my strengths are. This is the thing that I am good at. Or am I good at this thing and I like doing this thing in the first place because it's something that I've been encouraged to do and socialized to do. And so therefore I have built up skills in those areas. For example, I am very much the keeper of the calendar in our relationship. I have my color coordinated money spreadsheets for us. And Dan does like most of the handiwork around the house. And so like our skills and our interests are definitely very gendered, but also <laughs> he is <laughs> much taller and stronger than me. And there is like definitely a little bit of, oh, I could learn to do some of this handiwork around the house, but I've got someone who is like doing it for me. So like, why bother learning? There's definitely also an element of that. But yeah, this is just something that I think about a lot and I'm always like questioning in our relationship. Like, am I doing this and are you doing this because I'm a woman and you're a man? Or is this like genuinely like the best way that we work together. One of my favorite things that I have read that's really helped me like understand these roles like in our relationship and I made sure that Dan read it as well is The Mental Load, a feminist comic by Emma, especially the first one, which is called You Should Have Asked. And it's basically about kind of like the division of household chores, why didn't you do this thing? Oh, well, I would have done it, you should have asked. But it's like, you know, you should have known. And how the woman often takes on the role of household manager and delegates tasks. But by being a manager, you're also just like having to be aware of everything that is going on and knowing when to delegate. And the male partner doesn't take on that same mental load and will only like act when told to do something. So. <laughs> Very important in terms of just naming and acknowledging the situation and then taking steps to address it together so that like Dan and I are on the same page and we like know what's going on. Like we have words now, we have got language for when I feel like I'm being the household manager, I can say to him, 
I feel like I'm being the household manager and he knows what that means. And so then we can like work on that together. Next up, I wanna talk about what I call biology versus feminism versus modern technology. In my understanding of feminism, one of its many goals is to separate our human potential and the way that we are treated from our biology. This can be achieved in lots of ways, one of those ways being like cultural and social change, another being political and economic change. So in terms of that, I'm thinking like generous parental leave and free childcare, like that would be great. But then it also can be achieved through advancements in modern technology. So in terms of that, I'm thinking things like formula and pumping and bottle feeding. So in the context of parenting and gender roles, especially in like a cis hetero relationship, when you've got one person that's got the boobs and one person that's got the milk, you can definitely fall into like one person being the primary caregiver and with the lack of social support from the state as well that just can get exacerbated like here in the UK statutory paternity leave is just two weeks two weeks so in my relationship no matter how equal we want our parenting to be we are definitely going to be restricted by things like our biological potential but also very much restricted by political and economic policies in place in our country. Having a more robust safety net from the state would give people, would give couples a lot more choice when it comes to how they want to parent. So in terms of weighing up all of the options that are available to me and figuring out what my choice is, I definitely want to try and breastfeed. And I say try because it's something that not everyone can do. You might have a lot of problems with it. So I'm trying to like manage my expectations there. But I also don't want to exclusively breastfeed. Ideally, in an ideal world, I would breastfeed and pump so that then we can have bottles of my expressed milk so that Dan can also feed the baby. It also means that like we could put the baby in childcare when they get old enough if we could afford it. Honestly, haven't even looked into how much that costs. <laughs> and whilst we want the parenting to be a 50-50 split, because I also want to try and breastfeed at least some of the time, it's just about acknowledging that this will create an imbalance in our relationship. But Dan can take on other stuff, like he's already been doing during pregnancy, like Dan basically is doing 90% of the cooking. And so the way that I think about it is that you can't 50-50 every like individual task and instead hope for that like just across the board things eventually even out. Also, if breastfeeding does happen to work for me, but the baby just like will not take a bottle, which is apparently what I was like, as a baby, then that changes things as well because that basically means that I will be exclusively breastfeeding and won't be able to be away from the baby for more than two to three hours is what I've heard. And also won't be able to put the baby in childcare if they're not able to take a bottle either. So we've weighed up the pros and cons for this, also taken into account our desires and what we want, and then also <laughs> accounting for all of the unknowns and just kind of like having to accept that this is going to be a very gendered part of parenting for us. But this isn't necessarily gendered for everyone. For some parents where one is breastfeeding or chest feeding and the other isn't, it might not be gendered at all depending on the genders of the people in that relationship. But because I'm a cis woman and Dan is a cis man, it definitely feels very gendered to me. But fingers crossed we can make this breastfeeding and pumping and bottle feeding thing work. We shall see, we shall see. But speaking of modern technology, what a segue. Thank you so much to Lelo for sponsoring this video. I've worked with Lelo a bunch before. I absolutely love their sex toys. They feel really good and they look really good. Lelo are all about educating and empowering women and people with vulvas to open up about self-pleasure and sex and encouraging you to explore your own fantasies. As you may have seen from some of my previous videos, the Lelo Sealer is one of my favorite sex toys and they recently sent me the Sealer 
Cruise. The Sela Cruise has cruise technology in it, which gives you more consistent and controlled pleasure. Basically, it automatically increases the intensity when you press it hard against you. And so this means that you don't lose that intensity when you're getting to that point where you're like wanting to press harder and then it like goes down a bit and you're like messing with the functions and stuff. But no, no, you press it down hard and it's like, oh yeah, we know what you're doing. We know what's up. So absolutely love that. And whilst what works for me might not work for you, you know, different strokes for different folks and all of that, definitely don't force your body to do anything that it doesn't want to do. This toy has very much helped me explore my own pleasure. There are things that I have learned that my body can do <laughs> that I did not know it could do. It very much guides you on your sexual journey, helping you to discover what feels good and pleasurable for you and very much allows you to go at your own pace. I've mentioned this in other videos before, but one of my favorite things about this toy is like the eight different settings and the way that they cycle through. Like just the settings on this toy are perfect for me. <laughs> I love them. It just perfectly builds from like a really slow rhythm to kind of like a crescendo and then to like the final setting, which is just like constant on, which is exactly what I want in that moment. So for me, it's really allowed me to kind of like understand what feels good. And then one of the great things is that when you learn what feels good for you during solo sex, that can help you communicate your wants and desires and your needs to your partner if that's something that you wanna do. I think also because I love really intentionally going through the different modes on this toy, it really helps to tune in to like mindful sex and like really go slow and be present in the moment because you're really following what all the different sensations feel like. It's definitely a toy I like to take my time with. It's great for a slow build. It's great for edging and really intense orgasms. <laughs> And there's lots of physical and mental positives to orgasm. So very happy about that. It is a clitoral stimulation toy and it has this wonderful large mouth, which I absolutely love because it means that it really can kind of encompass that entire area. And it's not direct stimulation because it's that like sonic wave technology. It's also extra soft silicone, really smooth and body safe and waterproof. And I have another Lello toy to show you. This is the Smart Wand 2. Look at it, look at it. <laughs> this can give you an all over massage. So yes, you can use it on your clitoris if that's what you want, but I mean, you can, you can really use it anywhere, anywhere. It definitely helps to relax and relieve some stress. It can be used solo or partnered. It has 10 different massage settings. And of course, it's that really smooth and body safe silicone. One of my favorite things about this toy is this really great long handle. It has come in handy during pregnancy to like reach around my bump. And am I tempted to pack this in my hospital bag for back massages during labor? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So thank you so much to Lello for sponsoring this video. You can check out the Sela Cruise and the Smart Wand 2 in the links in the description below. So next up, I wanted to talk all about the work situation and kind of like how I'm feeling about that. So Dan's work situation is that he is a employee of a company, PAYE. He is entitled to that two weeks statutory paternity leave, but his company is actually offering him six weeks full pay, so very happy about that. Although I think that what the government offers should be longer, but you know, I will take whatever crumbs Dan's company <laughs> is offering us because six weeks full pay, thank you. My work situation, I've done a whole video on my More Hannah YouTube channel about how I'm navigating maternity leave as a self-employed small business owner. So if you want the details of that, head over there, but basically the short of it is my plan is to take three months off, but I'm not taking any official maternity leave pay or allowance. Fun. <laughs> and this is something that I hear all of the time on the Financial Diets YouTube channel, which is that having kids improves a man's career, but hinders a woman's. Fun, 
times. Basically, if you're a woman, you're gonna be seen as less reliable if you have children because you're going to put them first over your job. And then men are seen as more reliable because they're a family man and so they need to provide for their family and so they're gonna work extra hard. I hate it. Obviously this doesn't impact me in the same way because I'm my own boss and so I know how reliable I am. But because I am my own boss, logistically I can't take a full year off work in the same way that others maybe can. And I definitely feel a lot of like fear and worry and anxiety around this. One in terms of my work, but then also in terms of mine and Dan's dynamic. Because of mine and Dan's different work situations, after he goes back to work full time from the office, may I add, I have been used to him working from home for the last two years, but his job is kind of shifting. And so after he goes back from paternity leave, he is going to be like full time in the office. And that definitely feels really scary to me. Whilst I can't take a full year off work, my work is definitely still more more flexible than Dan's and so I will be doing most of the childcare and yeah there definitely is a bit of resentment there and of course this is all heightened by the lack of like government support and the lack of free childcare that definitely doesn't make any of this easier. One of the things that Dan and I have talked about is that when I start going back to work it's him doing compressed hours so he does like a four day work week and then he has a day off which can be the day that I'm working which sounds great, but with compressed hours, that means that the days that he will be working, they'll be really long days. <laughs> so yeah, at this stage, I don't 100% know how we're going to be navigating this whole thing, but that leads me to the final thing that I wanted to talk about, which is communication. <laughs> because we don't 100% know how all of this is going to plan out yet, we have been having a lot of conversations about it, just kind of figuring out how we're both feeling about it, but then also just being really open and saying like, hey, in this situation, definitely can imagine myself feeling a lot of resentment towards you because of that. And it's really important to us just to be super honest with each other and to have that open dialogue. So when we start having those feelings of resentment or like we want something to change, we do feel like we can bring it up to the other person and it's not gonna like cause a horrible argument or anything. And ultimately to me, it feels like navigating one big negotiation with each other, with our wants and desires, with our circumstances and just trying to figure out like, what can we change if that's something that we want to change and what things because of our situation are we just going to have to accept but then emotionally support each other through that. Also I just wanted to add this thing that my dad told me that him and my mum did when me and my sister were kids which is that like if we wanted or needed a parent we usually would shout for mum. And one of the things that my parents decided between them was that when we yelled for mum, what we were actually yelling for was just a parent in general. And so mum didn't mean mum has to be the one that answered. If one of us yelled mum, then either one of them would be like, yes, what do you want? And I really like that approach because even like as young kids, especially like if you're spending most of your time with your mum, then you might be more likely to yell mum instead of dad when you want something. But acknowledging that that might be the case with your kids as parents and so knowing that like, if someone yells mum, maybe dad could answer that as well. So yeah, I'm curious about any of you listening who are maybe also in like cis hetero relationships and you have kids. Is this something that you think about? How are you navigating this whole thing? Am I overthinking it? <laughs> <laughs> and then also queer couples with kids, how do gender roles and gender stereotypes impact your parenting, if at all? I'd be really interested to hear from you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks again to Lello for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.